This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. And then he's going to steal the NWA TV title from Nikita Koloff and that eventually starts a feud. And then we're going to have a title unification Starcade 87. We would see Nikita Koloff and Terry Taylor have an 18 minute and 20 second match that Meltzer said the first 10 and a half minutes were so bad. It quickly became the favorite for the worst match of the year. Meltzer would write Taylor looked nervous walking to the ring. And it appeared that this was a match where neither would cooperate with each other. Nikita sold nothing and made Taylor look hopeless. I guess both realized how bad it was because they started to cooperate in the last eight minutes were really good. This is a different era in professional wrestling, but man, this thing was just oil and water here. Was it not? Yeah. Yeah. And it's unfortunate and unnecessary. Yeah. There's, there's no excuse for two guys, two athletes, uh, the stature of Nikita and Taylor to not have a good match, especially on a pay-per-view and that's what happened. And a lot of that was, you know, Taylor was knew that he was treading on thin ice. He knew that, uh, Nikita was one of Dusty's favorites. And when you're a favorite of the booker, all of a sudden, you know, the, the climate changes a little bit. Uh, but I remember that match. There's just no reason for it to suck. It did. Uh, and as Melcher pointed out, which I agree with in the latter latter stages of the match, it got to be decent, but there's no sense in having a, a bad 10 minutes start a head start because you lose your audience. Taylor was on uncertain ground on thin ice. He didn't know where his future was going to be. And I'm sure that Nikita, I say, I'm sure I'm relatively sure that Nikita was told to not give him too much, you know, and when the common sense would tell you, Terry Taylor was a star. He knew how to work, uh, and you should make your opponent before you beat them. It's just logical. That's what you do. Oh, that's uh, predictable. No bullshit. That's, that's fundamentally sound booking. And so, cause if you're going to beat somebody, you, you want to beat somebody. And so, but, uh, Nikita was guzzling Taylor, no selling this, you know, everybody wanted to be the road warriors. You know, you get knocked down, you get up and stick your tongue out, do a trapezius shot and all that stuff. Same old shit, illogical. So, uh, yeah, that was a, that was a bad night, bad night, the office for Taylor and, and, and all of us, quite frankly, cause that match was, that match was, had a little bit of buildup. Yeah. That match had a, had a kind of had a feel. It felt like an inner inner league game or something, but, uh, it, it just, re, it's remembered the wrong way. Let's, uh, let's talk about the, uh, the, the territories here. He's going to start to bounce around. St. Louis, Kansas city, and then over to mid Atlantic championship wrestling, where he's going to take the junior heavyweight title with uh, Les Thornton. Tell the, uh, some of our younger listeners who may not be familiar with the name who Les Thornton was back then and, and, and what he's up to in more recent years. Well, I don't know what he's up to in more recent years, but Les is a, was a Brit, uh, and had a lot of that British style, the counters, the reversals, the escapes. And all those things and was a solid hand. He was a solid hand and reliable guy. That's why he got booked everywhere. He was reliable and he could work with anybody. So, uh, but the junior heavyweight, the, at that time, the junior heavyweights had credence because all those junior heavyweight guys that were NWA affiliated to some degree were still following the legend of Danny Hodge and Hodge still had built up a great reputation as, uh, a very, uh, talented junior heavyweight. Now, if you're, if you're less than, uh, everybody else, you can't be the, the junior heavyweights, the, all those things like AEW doesn't have a junior heavyweight title. I'm not advocating it either. Uh, too many titles really spoils the soup to me. Uh, you don't need that many. And I heard somebody say they, that I hope they hoped AEW had a six man tag title. Uh, and I. I wouldn't be against it, but it would be something I'd be breaking my door down and running up and down the halls here and saying, guess what? We have a junior heavyweight title. Uh, but then it was looked at a lot differently. And so, uh, I know in later years, talents like, uh, Sean Waltman always looked at that distinction of being a junior heavyweight or cruiserweight or whatever name you want to call it. 
uh, as a negative. And to some degree, he was absolutely right. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.